SpaceX moving Coco construction site, Starship updates and Pad 39A Starship launch mount. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. As always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. SpaceX moving the Coco construction site? SpaceX, as most will know, currently has two construction sites for its Starship and the Super Heavy booster. One of the two sites is in Boca Chica, Texas. It is very public, so people can approach it and take pictures and videos on a daily basis. That is one of the reasons why the Starship construction has sparked so much public interest. The other site, known to enthusiasts as the Coco site, is in Florida, close to Kennedy Space Center. It is less well accessible as it's shielded by vegetation and ejection restricted company properties. As mentioned before though, John Winkup does a wonderful job of providing us with valuable footage on a regular basis. But how long will that last? The Coco site has one major problem. Transporting a finished Starship will not be easy at all. We know by now how SpaceX will attempt to transport the prototype from COCO to KSC and we know that it will involve many steps. Mobile lift platforms, closing a highway, transferring the prototype onto a barge and finally onto land again and then up to Pad 39A. It's doable and SpaceX will probably make it happen but it will be costly and risky as Starship has a 9 meter diameter body that is very large and so very complicated to move. In Boca Chica, for example, SpaceX has a short and easy path over some backcountry roads with little traffic, a roughly 2.5 miles trip to the launch pad. Recently, a NOAA satellite has made a pass over the Florida coast and Kennedy Space Center to assess Hurricane Dorian damage and took some fresh pictures of the area. On these pictures, we can see progress being made on a project SpaceX announced over a year ago. In June 2018, James Gleason, a SpaceX spokesman, said that as SpaceX's launch cadence and manifest for missions from Florida continues to grow, they are seeking to expand their capabilities and streamline operations to launch, land and refly their Falcon family of rockets. The proposed operation envisions the possibility of further growth to support the launch manifest or new launch vehicle specifications. And here's where it becomes kind of obvious. Have you wondered why all the new structures at the Coco site were quick builds, easy to raise and easy to tear down? That might just be because SpaceX does not intend to use the site for a long time. Now let's have a look at our map again and zoom in a bit more to actually see the area and the progress already made. So as you can see, there already has been significant clearing of the project area itself and the road. Two large retention areas have been excavated and a first small building can be seen as well. All this was not there two months ago, so progress is fast at the site. Now let's look into the future and see what exactly SpaceX will build here. This is an official filing from SpaceX for the project site, so that's what they intend to build. As you can see, there will be a large hangar, which we've already seen in an earlier rendering from 2018. Here, SpaceX will be able to do final preparations on assembled Falcon rockets and possibly Starships, if the company decides at a later date to switch the building process from vertical to horizontal. Also, administration will be located in this building. Next, we have an assembly and staging building a bit further in the back. Here, SpaceX will assemble rockets. Which ones is not really clear yet, as right now SpaceX manufactures its Falcon boosters in Hawthorne, California. The facility's manufacturing footprint has more than doubled to more than 90,000 square meters or almost 1 million square feet. In my opinion, it seems highly unlikely that SpaceX will relocate its booster and Dragon manufacturing capabilities to KSC, which leaves few purposes for the assembly building at Roberts Road except for Starship production. As Starship is a much larger vehicle and will be much harder to transport from Hawthorne to KSC, which is on the other side of the continent, it would make a lot of sense for SpaceX to build it much closer to KSC. Next up, we have two construction pads. Does that look familiar to you? Right, we already know those from Coco and the Boca Chica construction site. Both sites use concrete pads as foundations for vertical Starship assembly. So if SpaceX continues to assemble the Starships like this in the future, these make a lot of sense too. Other than that, we have storage and stockpile areas, a utility yard, parking lots, nothing special. 
There is one more thing that might interest those who do future KSC visitor bus tours, which will most likely pass by SpaceX's facility. Another map shows a rocket garden next to the SpaceX facility. Not long ago, KSC asked SpaceX if they'd be willing to gift a Falcon booster to KSC's rocket garden. And Musk said that they'd be honored. Was that an early step to prevent fragmentation of the rocket exhibits at KSC? A rocket garden would make sense for SpaceX and there would already be enough exhibits to make a trip worth your while. In an earlier draft of the project, a futuristic visitor and viewing tower with an integrated launch control center was planned for the property. It would have towered 100 meters tall above the area and would have provided a unique new viewing point for rocket launches at KSC. Rumors are though that the idea has been cancelled. So we'll have to wait and see if SpaceX continues the plan. Last but not least, there's a large area left on the property for all sorts of future expansion plans, which is another huge bonus point in favor of the site. It's definitely going to be exciting to see what SpaceX is planning for the facility and if they're really planning to shift their Starship production from Coco to KSC. There's one big downfall to the site though. Visitors will only be able to take pictures from the KSC bus tour or a drone that has a telephoto lens, which tend to be very heavy. Starship Updates As always, Boca Chica is very busy keeping up with SpaceX's ambitious plans. The Starship presentation is less than two weeks away and there's a lot of work to be done on the orbital prototype to finish it at least on the outside. First of all, Elon Musk visited Boca Chica. He gave a few high fives and looked at the progress made on the launch site and shipyard. He was wearing a Nuke Mars shirt and overall he looked pleased. And Maria Pointer has been busy taking pictures for all of us again. So let's have a look. Here you can see the upper bulkhead assembled and attached to a form ring to be lowered into the tank section and welded into place. Which has already been done as you can see. This finishes the raw tank structure with plumbing, electrical work and probably lots of fine tuning left to be done. The top of the fairing section needs lots of work as well, because this won't fit onto the top cone, which is also being worked on on the ground to perfect the shape. As soon as both pieces fit, we can expect the final stacking here as well. The tank section has seen two manholes being installed lately. Possibly these are for an umbilical tower. Honestly though, I don't know about that, as a launch tower for Starship prototypes has never been mentioned before. It would make sense though, so we'll have to see about that in the future. The windbreaker is making good progress as well. Plating is crawling up its side and will be done soon. Meanwhile, at the launch facility, work continues as well. Austin Barnard took these nice pictures of recently started excavation work at the landing pad. This might be the first sign for a flame diverter system being installed at the pad. In the end, Super Heavy will be equipped with a total of 35 Raptor engines. A massive flame diverter system would be needed for that. If this really is a flame diverter being installed, it will give us a nice estimate on how big of a rocket SpaceX is planning to test here in the near future. And this is most likely going to be the place where Elon Musk and others will give the Starship presentation on September 28th. As Austin Barnard said it, what better place to give the presentation than at the Starship construction site. No doubt in preparation for the Starship presentation, a Merlin engine normally used on a Falcon rocket has arrived in Boca Chica. It will most likely be an exhibit at the presentation, showing the differences between a Raptor and a Merlin engine in direct comparison and there are quite a few. Raptor is much larger, so it will be nice to see the both side by side. Boca Chica is getting ready for the two main events of this year. First, the Starship presentation and hopefully soon after Starship's inaugural flight up to a height of 22.5 kilometers. SpaceX Pad 39A Constructions So this is only going to be a very short news, but I really wanted to let you guys know. Julia Bergeron has been busy snapping some pics for us. This could have other reasons too, but these pictures show construction equipment at Kennedy Space Center Pad 39A. For those who do not know, this is the pad where Apollo and the Space Shuttle lifted off and it's the pad that SpaceX is using for Falcon 9 and heavy launches. In the future, there is supposed to be another launch tower here. According to Elon, it will be attached to the back of the existing launch structure and it will enable SpaceX to do Starship launches out of KSC. So we might soon see a Starship launch tower construction starting here. Elon said that it's already being built in segments off-site. 
So this wraps up today's episode of What About It? Will SpaceX move their construction site to Roberts Road and is the Starship launch tower already being built? As always, tell me in the comments. Welcome to the brief section where I thank all those patrons for their constant support to What About It? Without you, the show wouldn't be the same. And again, as always, we have new names to put on the list. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Kenneth Smith. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? If you liked what you saw, please don't forget to like and subscribe as this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content. As this gives me more time to focus on what I love doing the most to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. SpaceX? No. <laughs> almost 1 million square feet <laughs> what? would have provided <laughs> the tank section has been two manholes and now I'm not gonna do that that crazy yeah excuse me we cut that out though